the topic of this video is using the compound interest formula. When money is borrowed or loaned, interest is a fee that can be charged for that privilege. If that interest is compounded, there is a formula that can be used to calculate the fee. Let's look at that formula. F equals P, parenthesis, 1 plus the fraction R over N, close parenthesis, raised to the N times T power. F represents the future amount of money and is expressed in dollars. T is the present amount of money and is also expressed in dollars. Sometimes that is referred to as the principal. R is the interest rate and must be expressed as or converted to a decimal when used in the formula. N is the number of times the account is compounded in one year and has no units. T is the length of time involved and must be expressed in or converted to years. Now there's another version of this formula that starts with A equals instead of F equals. But the reason why I have chosen to use the F equals formula is because I have found that it makes it for easier, it makes it easier for students to know where to put which numbers. F for future, T for present, makes it very clear which number goes where. It's also very important to talk about the difference between N and T. Let's imagine you bring some money to a bank and you decide to invest it. The bank says that they are going to compound your account quarterly, which means each quarter of the year they're going to give you more money based on the amount of money in your account at that time. Well, there are four quarters in a dollar and there are four quarters in a year. So therefore, you will receive money in your account four times in a one year period. That's N. T, however, is the number of years you leave that money with the bank. So for example, if you leave your money with the bank for five years, T would be five. And if you leave it for just six months, T would be one half because six months is half of a year. Okay, now let's look at some words that describe how an account can be compounded. Skipping the first row, we see that daily weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually are our options. Let's work from the bottom up. If your account is compounded annually, that means that you receive money once per year. This makes sense. When we think about an annual event, that is an event that happens only once each year. So if your account is compounded annually, then it gets money once each year. This tells us the value of N the number of times the account is compounded in one year. Semi-annually would be n equals 2. Semi means half, so semi-annually means you go half the year and you get paid, and then you go the other half of the year and you get paid. You're getting paid two times in one year. Quarterly we already talked about, four quarters in a dollar, so quarterly means n equals 4. 12 months in a year, so n equals 12. Weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year, so if you see that an account is being compounded weekly, you should think that n equals 52. Bi-weekly, however, means something different. Perhaps you get paid bi-weekly at your job. That means you do not get paid every week, but instead every other week. Thinking of it in another way, you get paid one week, but not the one after that. And then you get paid, but not the one after that. Half of the weeks you get paid, half of the weeks you don't. So if there are 52 weeks in a year, you would get paid 26 of them. If an account is compounded bi-weekly, that tells us N is 26. And finally, if an account is compounded daily, since there are 365 days in a year, N would be equal to 365. Now, in the real world, many banks actually use a 360-day year. And so if they are claiming that they are going to compound your account daily, you may find that they're using the number 360 instead of 365. There are reasons why this might be so, but they're a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. All right, so let's put it all together. We have our compound interest formula, and we will use it to solve problems. We just need to be able to figure out by reading the problems, what are the values of the variables F, T, R, N, and T.